What do you think is, is changing in the way we are planning in for infrastructure? I will say two things. Uh, the first thing I'll say is that uh, master planning as we've known it traditionally, its days are numbered. You know, a deterministic plan which assumes that there will be a certain trajectory of growth, a certain trajectory to risk uh, is no longer something that could work. So, we really have to come up with a new imagination in master planning which is more iterative, which is more attuned to what is actually happening on the ground almost in real time and something which is um, a, a more dynamic process. Uh, that is the only way we can go beyond managing disaster risk to also dealing with uncertainties. So, mm -hmm. I think that's my first point. My second point is what you alluded to is really a people centric approach where you don't look at people as subjects of your intervention, but principal actors. And it is something which we have to really put it on the ground in action and not just pay lip service to. You know, we have, I'll give you an example. We have colleagues in the studio here from Nepal. Uh, in 2000, uh, I'll give you two examples from yes. Nepal. Uh, you know, in 2015, there was an earthquake. Of course, there were losses from the earthquake. Yes. But what we don't know is the work that was done in Nepal 15 years prior, you know, for 15 years prior to the earthquake was so people focused, you know, I mean, when they developed their earthquake scenario, it was not about, you know, what is the peak ground acceleration and what is the intensity? It is about, you know, it is a really a scenario which talks about what will happen to people. people because when they wrote the scenario like that, it galvanized action by people and that is the reason the losses what could have been in 2015 was much less than uh, what happened in 2015 was much less than what could have happened mm -hmm. and now taking the same thing on to planning of uh, reconstruction uh, processes you know Nepal's reconstruction of housing is one of the best yes, examples yes, exactly. of people focused you know, and I would like to say that, you know, Government of India was one of the partners in it as well. So, we had the honor of learning from, from Nepal in this. And the whole thing was, you know, you, you work with communities in uh, identifying the levels of damage. You come up with appropriate technologies at the local level. And you, you also build capacity at the local level. You know, Nepal, I, I would reckon that it has probably the highest number of women masons yes. uh, who, yeah. who participated in recovery and reconstruction program. Tell me which other country has that. That was possible because the whole planning process yes. for reconstruction was people centered. Yes. It was not about the reconstruction authority. And I think uh, the, the lights are blinding me here in the studio, but I think the former CEO of the reconstruction authorities in the audience, he, he would tell you that, you know, it was not about, you know, uh, Kathmandu. Yes, it was. It was about there. out there yeah. in Gorkha, yeah. you know, where, where people were affected, you know, where they needed help and they know what they need. You yes. know, it's not people in Kathmandu. And, and so we have examples and I'm sure there are examples from other yeah. countries as well that the, it it's is here. possible. Yeah. We just have to stop being lazy. Yes. Uh, lazy yes, planners. Exactly. And not and planning really from the desk, right? in the conversation. And yes, exactly. I think that's yeah. another important message. We have to get out in the field, especially yeah. in these uh, very high level global conferences yeah. and really talk to the people who yeah. are uh, most affected often. So maybe that, thank you, Kamal. So yeah. I